So uh, I'm Justin Mall, I'm the uh, VP of Marketing for uh, Sales and Marketing for Pixis Technologies, and I'm going to talk about uh, MOSA, SOSA, and NOSA. And NOSA, what I mean by that is not an open standard. Uh, MOSA in this context, I mean anything that is not SOSA. So any modular open standard architecture type that is not uh, SOSA based. So where are some of the common design challenges for these types of systems? Uh, first, uh, like Bill was saying, cooling. You know, cooling is the big challenge. There are some uh, air-cooled designs where we need to cool, you know, 2,300 watts in the system. Uh, a lot of the conduction-cooled uh, systems, you know, they're, you know, some of the boards are already, you know, averaging 100 watts per slot. And some, you know, there's that drive to, to keep going higher. Also, uh, RF and optical. Everyone just wants to bring it, just a ton of fiber, a ton of RF, and get it out to that front panel. Uh, so there are a lot of applications doing that. <clears throat> and the other one is swap, size, weight, and power. So how do we cool these types of systems? We'll try anything here. That one didn't uh, work too well, so we focus on fans. Um, you know, there are different types of fans you can, uh, and it depends on the application, right? I mean, they're mill grade, whether it's ruggedized, you have to take in the back pressure in account, the amount of airflow, the space you have, and so on. Uh, doing thermal simulation, you could find those hot spots in the system. Uh, you could do different things to cool those hot spots, maybe baffling or uh, some things you could do with the spacing and, and so on. But there are some exciting new uh, cooling techniques that are coming out, like uh, Vita 48.8, and there's also Vita 48.9 uh, coming through, which is uh, airflow through. And that is basically air going through the module itself. So you can see on the bottom there uh, the uh, you know, leveraging that approach where air is going through the module itself, and obviously that could cool a lot more heat. Uh, there's also, uh, we're doing a custom solution for a customer for uh, Vita 48.7 type, it's, you know, leveraging that, and that is air over the boards, over the fins of the boards. So instead of just having that pure conduction cooling, you have fins on the boards and airflow is going through there, and that is helping to cool it more efficiently. And there's also, of course, liquid cooled. Traditionally, it's been the last resort, but you know, there seems to be, you know, hey, we're going that direction a little more, you know, openness to that type of approach. So SOSA, uh, I think everybody here knows SOSA well. I won't go into that the elements too much, but it's really more the challenges. Uh, these types of applications, uh, they are typically very hot boards. They're really perf uh, pushing the performance limits of a system, you know, really trying to maximize it. So, uh, <clears throat> you know, typically, you know, boards are in excess of 100 watts per slot. And then the backplanes, you know, just about every new design, you know, 100 gigabit Ethernet or PCIe Gen 4 type of speeds with driving to go even faster than that in the future with new uh, connector innovations as, as those come out. We've seen some of the presentations. But that's also more difficult when you have these RF and optical in the back plane uh, at the, the bottom there. You have a bunch of those and you're taking up that routing space in the back plane. Uh, so it makes it more challenging for especially 100 gigs in, in a really long backplane to be able to, you know, route that properly. So I'll talk about some solutions and, you know, via some examples uh, of how we overcame many of these challenges. So, uh, you know, one is the 100 gigabit Ethernet, those type of speeds. You know, again, it's, you know, doing that you know, backplane simulation. It's ideal if the vendors will, you know, work together and, you know, have NDAs and so on where uh, they will share 
some of the, the details of both the thermal profiles of the boards that are plunging in on your thermal simulation and on the backplane side. And that's the other side is the thermal. So cooling 100 watts per slot, we have airflow going over the fins of the chassis. So a, a mill 19 inch rugged rack mount design, 3U SOSA. Uh, the heat in the, uh, the boards is being dissipated and going to the fins and the fins have airflow going over them. So there is not airflow going through the, uh, through the boards themselves. The airflow is going over the fins to help dissipate that you know, in excess of 100 watts per slot. And again, you could do the thermal simulation, you could find the hotter slots, and you could you know, utilize various techniques uh, to cool those hotter spots. Uh, on the, uh, there's of course a lot of IO, and uh, you know, sometimes you have to be careful for that optical and fiber to route that, especially without blocking that airflow. So you, know, you have to really manage the, the, the proper path of routing that cabling you know, and you know, whether it's in the, the cooler areas or you know, going around making sure you're not blocking airflow and that you have enough space. So there's just a lot of effort in managing that space that you have on the front panel. And then finally, SOSA requires a, a chassis manager. So, and ideally, it doesn't take up a slot. That's very key. So there are uh, mezzanine-based approaches that go in the back of the back plane that don't take up any slots. And uh, that way, you're really achieving that swap by not, uh, by not consuming additional slots and, uh, and space. MOSA. So MOSA, again, we're talking about you know, other open standards, it could be uh, other, other open BPX where they don't need the performance of SOSA. And there are a lot of applications, there are many five volt applications that they, they need the five volt. Uh, so while SOSA is extremely important and you know, very big growth area, there are a lot of MOSA type, what I would call the other uh, type of applications. And it could be also their space VPX uh, VME and, and uh, you know, other compact PCI serial and so on. Uh, sometimes these are very high performance as well, but other cases, they, they don't need all uh, the speed, you know, just, you know, a lower speed, especially if it's space, you know, space wire might be fine for them. So uh, it just really depends on the applications and their lot. Actually, these chassis that I'm showing here, uh, one's a dual depth uh, development type of chassis for space VPX. Uh, and the other one is a space VPX uh, ATR. Um, there's also the flexibility in what I call these MOSA type of systems where, uh, <clears throat> you know, they're not restricted to that specific SOSA profile. You have to use this profile, you have to use these modules. You know, there's more flexibility, sort of that just make it work type of attitude. Um, and your ability in the, what I call MOSA like is leveraging the standards where you could break the rules a little bit. You know, you can you could do things to achieve the goals that, that you want to reach. And again, the challenges are the same. It's that cooling, the IO management, and so on. Uh, so here's an example of you know solving some of those problems in the ATR uh, type of form factor. And here the issue was, you know, uh, it had some, but they, they didn't really need all that performance of SOSA. They didn't need all the bells and whistles. And also there were some IO requirements that were, you know, a little bit different. So here, one of the approaches, we can put in dual IO interface boards. So we could have them on each side, and they could be in kind of a mirror concept in some cases. Others, it's more just two unique I.O. boards. And uh, you know, that way you could really leverage that space. Also, the uh, SOSA aligned chassis manager. A chassis manager was required, um, and to maximize swap, you have it beneath the back plane, 
under here, uh, so that's not take a, taking up any slots. And then, of course, there's a fiber routing and, and the other elements, but here we're achieving that swap to, to uh, solve the problem. Another application is, uh, you know, so so like, but uh, they, they had to have five volt. That was another application where, you know, they, they really needed five volt. And uh, they also, they were a little more cost sensitive. This was more of a data center type of application. It wasn't rugged. Um, but they wanted to have some SOSA boards, kind of leverage some of that, have some of that going forward, and so on. So uh, to do that, um, not having that uh, five volt, because SOSA doesn't allow that, uh, sorry, having the five volt, uh, allowed rear pluggable power supplies that went back that were uh, more cost efficient, more readily available, you know, lowered the lead time, and a really nice approach, you know, without being limited to some of the requirements of the spec. Uh, also, heat was very important. Uh, you can see many of the boards here were uh, over 200 watts a slot. Many of the boards were, you know, very hot. So uh, this was a uh, recool approach where you have dual uh, 191 CFM hot swappable blowers in the system providing over 2,300 watts of cooling. And there are other techniques to use that can, you know, really maximize that cooling. And again, uh, chassis management, uh, in this case, a slot saver type, a mezzanine-based approach uh, you know, it's a little bit more expensive, so just a regular pluggable chassis manager was perfectly fine in this type of application. Uh, other examples I call kind of the MOSA is, uh, might be a 3U or 6U open VPX hybrid, and those are interesting where you can mix and match 3U and 6U, or you could have uh, multiple bays of, uh, of 3U slots. Um, again, maybe a, a VME, like you see there, a VME chassis, or uh, Space VPX or Red Black and so on. So NOSA. Uh, again, these are you know, applications where it you know, doesn't need to be an open, open standard. It's often, uh, they don't need that modularity. It's often just, you know, they want to do one specific task and do it really well. So, you know, it may be, uh, you know, controlling the RF spectrum or something like that. Um, so in this case, uh, and, and really, this could really broaden the type of applications in the NOSA. I mean, you could go from uh, that drone deterrence and jamming uh, type of systems, you know, different pole mounts and, you know, all, all different types, uh, you know, different types of, uh, of uh, signal jamming and, and uh, SIGINT and, and so on. The challenges, again, you know, sometimes very extreme uh, backplane performance, uh, reducing swap and uh, mill rugged interfaces. So the first one, uh, this one was at the time when uh, they wanted to leverage open VPX, but the RT3 connector at the time was not fast enough for their needs across the backplane. So, you know, they kind of used OpenVPX electrically, but uh, we ended up using a custom, very high speed connector because needed in excess of 28 gig speeds across a backplane. And actually, you can see it's a pretty big backplane there. Um, and to route that in a long distance can be uh, very challenging. So that's where we could do that Again, that backplane simulation, uh, look at the S parameters, work with the customers and their modules, and uh, really optimize uh, the design. Again, using that recool uh, dual blower approach for cooling over 2,200 watts and, uh, and a plenty of IO and a front to rear cooling approach. Another challenge is the crowded digital battlefield. So, you know, with all these devices talking to each other and uh, all this communication going on, 
how do you control that? How do you keep people out of your space? How do you communicate effectively with others safely, make sure you're not being spoofed, and so on? Uh, so one of the solutions, we basically utilized standard NI, you know, very ubiquitous NI SDRs that are all throughout all types of systems and uh, ruggedized them. So, you know, in, in these type of, a lot of people wanted to use those types of uh, devices, but in a mill arrow setting, or sometimes, you know, they just want it to be on the back of a truck and not fall apart on the way there. So sometimes it's more of a light rugged. Other times it's uh, just outdoor. So they just want an outdoor environment, be able to survive that type of application, you know, maybe a pole mount or something like that. So it's just an IP67. And other times it's full mill rugged. And, uh, you know, again, sometimes the speed, you know, those 100 gigabit Ethernet speeds, uh, cooling that with a heat sink uh, at the top, you know, to meet, you know, that, you know, the, some of the, the very challenging thermal requirements there, same type of uh, things we see in the other designs. Um, but having that versatility where also it could be from a ultra scale all the way down to a Spartan 6, and those where it might be a little more compact in, say, uh, you know, a man wearable type of device or, or something like that. So finally, to compare uh, these different chassis classes, I'd rank, you know, SOSA really the highest in a lot of the elements like high performance, um, you know, really trying to restrict the standards and keep things uh, focused and, and narrow, uh, which makes interoperability a lot easier and that scalability and reuse of there are a lot of advantages. I would give uh, MOSA uh, the higher marks on a little more versatility, you could kind of reach a lot of applications, but all the different elements have their advantages and uh, you know, we're happy to work with customers on whatever their approach is and tailor the solution to their needs. Are there any questions? <laughs>